Hello, my name's Daniel and I spent 17 years of my life working in the roofing industry and I used to get hundreds and hundreds of phone calls from customers who had problems with condensation in their loft. Now, if your loft looks like this and you're suffering from condensation, I believe that you can fix this product yourself with a product that only costs two pounds and can be installed DIY in less than five seconds. Now, if you want to find out more, keep watching. Now, a week ago, a friend of mine contacted me and she said, I've been in my loft and it's sopping wet. She said, I've got condensation all on the underside of the felt. It's all on the roof rafters. It's all dripping on the floor. Can you help? Now, with my 17 years experience in the roofing industry, I know that you shouldn't get condensation on the underside of your roofing felt in the summer. We're in the middle of July right now, so I was curious to find out what was going on. Now, when I visited my friend's house, the first thing I noticed was she had a hot water tank in her loft and the lid was loose and it was producing steam, which was collecting in the loft. Now, I had a good look at this hot water tank and I switched off the thermostat downstairs and it continued producing steam. So I isolated it by switching it off on the consumer unit, that's a fuse box, and I asked her to get in touch with a plumber, get him to come out and have a look at the thermostat and have a look at the tank. Well, she got back to me this morning and said, it's fixed, faulty thermostat. She was turning the hot water off, but the thermostat, because it was faulty, was continuing to boil the water. Now this is quite unusual. I think 99.9% .9 of cases of loft condensation are not because of a faulty thermostat. It's usually because of lack of ventilation. But this just goes to show that if you have condensation in your loft, don't automatically assume that it's just one thing that's causing it. It could be something else. There are corner cases out there which tend to buck the trend. Anyway, the vast majority of people have condensation in their loft because moisture comes up from the home. Let's say you're cooking, showering, bathing, putting, um, drying clothes on radiators and so forth. So all that moisture, obviously warm air rises, it comes up into your loft. Normally in the winter when you have cold timbers and you have cold felt and, and obviously um, roofing tiles and the entire loft is, is very, very cold. That warm moist air comes into contact with the cold surface you get condensation and you can normally see this as little droplets on the underside of the sarking felt or on your roofing timbers. Now, as I've already said, in 99.9% .9 of cases, all you need to do is improve your ventilation. And I've just been into my loft, coincidentally, and had a look and believe it or not, I can actually see a couple of little faults up here. So I'm gonna improve the ventilation in my loft, which is what I think you will probably need to do if you have condensation in your loft. Now, I don't know how well you can see this, but that is the corner of my roof. That's where the guttering is on the other side. And somebody has been up here and topped up the insulation and they've put about an extra 200 millimeters of insulation in and they've pushed it right down there into the corner. Now, there are vents on this part of the roof and the idea is the air comes in, goes through the, roof, through the loft to the other side of the roof and removes any moisture that's built up in the air, any vapor essentially that's in the air. Unfortunately, because this insulation is pushed right down into the corner, that's blocking the vent. So all I'm going to do now is pull all of this ventilation back, maybe 200 millimetres, and get a nice gap in there so I can get the airflow back into this loft. I must say, being in this loft, although it is July, it does feel really hot and stuffy in here. There is no airflow. It's actually a windy day outside, yet I cannot feel any airflow at all in this loft. Once I've done this, I am then going to install a few of these lap vents. And these cost two pounds each. They're cheap, easy to install, and they will improve the airflow even further. Okay, so if we look up at my roof, we can see we have bitumen felt on here, which is impermeable. Moisture cannot get through this felt. So that means that this loft cannot breathe. We get a buildup of moisture in here, it'll condensate on this felt. We have an overlap here. All we need to do is open this, this lap out to improve the airflow into the loft. And a simple way of doing that is with one of these. They only cost two pounds each. So all we do 
I'm doing this one handed, so just bear with me. There we go. That is that simple. And if you have a look, you can see that that has really opened that up down there. You might even be able to see the bottom of the roof, even if it's quite far away. So that took all of five seconds to install that vent, which will improve the airflow. And if I put my hand on there, I can actually feel a slight draft coming through. Now, obviously, just installing one of these is not going to be enough. We need to install several of them. So how many should you fit? On a typical end of terrace house like I have, which is around I don't know, six or seven meters long, with a gable on one end, you're probably looking at, I would say, five on each side of the roof to start off with, and then monitor the, uh, the condensation and just see if you get any improvements. I do, however, recommend that you fit these in a staggered fashion. So you can have one here, we could put one further down the roof, we could put one further up here and try and stagger them. Try not to have them all parallel to each other because what happens is you end up creating a wind tunnel. So the air comes in one vent and goes directly out the other. What we want to do is to create a good airflow throughout as much of the loft as possible. So try and stagger them and make them a little bit uneven around the loft. If we were to put one here and then one behind me on the opposite side of the roof, we'll just create an air tunnel between one and two vents and the rest of the loft won't be vented. So how effective are these loft vents? Well, I think in my loft, which as far as I'm aware, didn't have a problem, a condensation problem before, but there was definitely an issue with, with blocking of the vents in the eaves, in the corner of the roof. I think installing five of these vents on the front of the roof, five on the rear, and pulling that insulation back from the corner of the roof would be enough to provide suitable ventilation from this roof. Obviously, if you have a really bad condensation problem, you might want to put a few more vents in, but I think in 99.9% .9 of cases, just putting in five vents front and rear on a typical end of terrace house is normally enough to solve the condensation problem. Now there are a few other things you can do to reduce the amount of condensation that actually comes into the loft in the first place. One is to install a vapour barrier, which would typically go underneath this insulation on here. Imagine lifting all this insulation up and you put the water vapour barrier through and you put the insulation back on the top. The problem with that is it's actually quite expensive to do that because it needs to be sealed. You have lots of... Um, uh, pipes coming up into the loft if you have down lighters you have lights even if you have smoke alarms anything like that that's coming into the loft it all needs to be sealed up and taped up around that so it can be quite awkward to retrofit a vapor barrier into a loft uh, most people will find that just improving the ventilation in a loft will solve the problem and they don't need to install a vapor barrier other things you can do are to make sure that your vents on the outside of the house are not blocked. If you've had building work done recently, for example, on your roof, your, fo your fascias or your soffits, make sure that they haven't inadvertently blocked those vents. Uh, also, if you have an extractor fan in your bathroom, if you don't have a window, for example, in your bathroom and you have an extractor fan, make sure that it's working. Make sure that the ducting isn't emptying out into the loft. I've seen cases before where builders have put in an extractor fan and they're just emptying out the moisture into the loft. Again, that's gonna cause a problem. You might want to check that the ducting from the fan is actually going outside of the building. Make sure that it's not broken or snapped or anything like that. Other things you can do are to just adjust your lifestyle. Uh, some people dry clothes on radiators and they don't care to open a window, for example. Well, that might be fine in the summer when the loft is warm and condensation doesn't form up here, but if you're in a house with closed windows and closed doors and you're drying lots of clothes on the radiators, well, that moisture has to go somewhere. And if it goes into a loft that isn't properly ventilated, it will get trapped in there and it will just condensate on the cold surfaces. So sometimes adjusting or making changes to your lifestyle, for example, by buying a tumble dryer and getting that vented to the outside can make quite a bit of a difference. But I think for the vast majority of people, just buying these cheap, two pound vents will, will solve the problem or it will certainly ease the problem. Um, one final point I want to make is that it's perfectly normal to have some condensation in the loft. If it's freezing cold outside, most of us tend to keep our windows and doors closed, which again, traps all that moisture in. And because it's so cold, it's that moisture or the vapor will just condensate up in the loft. And that's perfectly normal. What isn't normal is condensation that 
doesn't go away. Condensation that stays and causes mold, um, algae or rot to the timbers or anything like that. If you go in your loft and you have like a musty sort of smell, a really smell of almost dampness, a smell of stale air, that really isn't normal. Um, and that's when you, you would need to think about putting some vents in. A final word on these vents. They work best when you have a breeze, okay? So whatever type of vent you may use in your loft, whether you have existing vents or not, or if you've just installed vents, they only work if you have a breeze. If you have a really, really calm day where there is no wind whatsoever, where there's no wind being blown into the loft, so there's nothing to suck the moisture out. So I know from experience of working in the roofing industry that sometimes when we have really calm days in the UK, perhaps you know have a little bit of snow or frost and there is absolutely no wind whatsoever, that's when customers tend to get more moisture, more condensation in their loft. It's colder, they're indoors closing their windows and, and their doors, maybe drying clothes on radiators, and there's just no wind, there's no draft to go through those vents and pour the moisture out of the loft. Again, it is quite normal to have a little bit of condensation in the loft, but it should clear up when the weather warms up or when there is a bit of a breeze, provided you have enough vents in the loft. What isn't normal is to have so much condensation in your loft for such a long time that it's actually starting to rot the timbers or cause mold or anything like that or if you get a horrible musty smell in the loft that is when it's a problem so it's perfectly normal to have a little bit of condensation that comes and goes with the weather and obviously your lifestyle and everything in the house that's perfectly normal so please don't panic if you see a little bit of loft a little bit of condensation in the loft you only need to be concerned if it doesn't go away and you feel that it's long term and it's causing a bit of an issue in the loft so just to go over that again, if you have condensation in your loft in the summer, it's probably because there's something in your loft or a fault or something which is just producing like way too much moisture. It could be a roof leak, could be a pipe leak, it could be a lid on a hot water tank has come loose, it could be a faulty thermostat that's causing the, the element to just constantly boil water. You know, there's, there's lots of reasons uh, why you could be getting moisture in the summer, but they're all quite rare, 99.9% percent of condensation problems in lofts are actually experienced in the winter not in the summer so if you do have condensation in the summer do take it seriously i'd recommend that you go in the loft or get a professional to go in there have a look around and try and find out you know what's going on what's causing this moisture problem if you have condensation in the winter first thing i say it's actually normal to have a bit of condensation in the loft in the winter if you are living in an older house your best bet is to look at the ventilation uh, make sure that none of the existing vents are blocked if you can install some additional vents the loft vents that i've just shown you are called lap vents and they're very very popular they're very cheap they can be installed diy there are other ways to ventilate ventilate a loft for example you can get a professional in to install roof tile vents which i'm going to show you a picture of now these are installed from the outside of the roof they do exactly the same thing as the lap vents that you can install yourself they just cost a bit more you might need to put scaffolding up to access the roof um, and, and generally they would normally be installed by a professional I have also seen a few corner cases where homeowners have stuffed so many of their possessions in their loft and I mean literally filled every square inch of their loft with their possessions that it's blocked the airflow. If you have hundreds and hundreds of boxes and bits of old carpet and whatever else in your loft there's a chance that that might block the airflow from the vents which could cause a buildup of moisture in the loft and so it might be worth maybe removing some items from the loft again this is more of a corner case issue and finally you have water vapor barriers which are installed above the ceiling these are best installed in new builds and extensions they are tricky and expensive to retrofit into a house because everything needs to be sealed up around down lighters lights um, smoke alarms cables anything that's going through the ceiling they all have to be taped up very very carefully um, around those the vapor barrier needs to be taped up very carefully it's very tricky to do that on a retrofit it's much easier to do that before you've got all the insulation and the possessions and everything in the loft so but do look into vapor barriers as well if you're continuing to have a problem with condensation and don't forget condensation just comes and goes in the winter if you have a very calm day well you could have 50 vents on your roof and they won't do anything if there's no draft coming into the loft but you may find a couple of days later that that draft pulls all the moisture out of the loft 
Again, if we have a really nasty cold snap of weather where it's minus 10 outside, don't be surprised if you have some condensation on the underside of the felt, even if you have vents, it should clear as the temperature warms up a little bit. But where condensation in the loft becomes a problem is when it doesn't clear, when it is constantly damp and constantly musty in the loft, where your possessions are beginning to get mold on them or rot on them where the timbers are showing signs of mold growth where there's mold growth on the underside of the felt that's when it's a problem and you'll usually need to take steps to remedy it look my name's Daniel I hope that you found this short video insightful um, I actually own a website called DIY gardening but I spent 17 years working as a roofing contractor so today I've just created this off-topic video just to talk about uh, to roof vents loft vents and and sort of loft condensation in general um, there isn't a one single solution to fit every problem sometimes you might have to take several steps for example pulling the insulation back opening up the existing vents putting in a few extra vents maybe moving your possessions around in the loft perhaps taping up things um little holes that are coming into your loft for example or if you have a loft hatch which isn't insulated again that can all let moisture up so there's lots of different reasons why loft condensation could become a problem um, but i would recommend to solve the problem that you start with the cheapest and easiest solutions first which are the loft vents they cost two pounds each a typical in the terrace house will only need 10 so you're looking at about 20 pounds i would only recommend moving on to the more expensive options like vapor barriers and things like that if you can't solve the loft condensation problem with the cheaper options first so and don't forget that a little bit of condensation in the loft that comes and goes is perfectly normal and i think something like 70 80 percent of houses in the uk will suffer condensation at some point even if they have fence installed so thanks once again for watching look my name's daniel if you found this video helpful um, please do hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe to my channel as well and you will find links in the description if you want to go and buy these lap vents they are incredibly easy to install and they only cost two pounds each